Yep, recording. Okay. Cool. I'm going to go ahead and push start, Mikal. Awesome. We'll let some folks start rolling in here. Yeah, it's so great to meet you. Hello, hello. I know. It's so nice to see you. You happy, too. Happy Monday. I feel like this is such a great way to start the start the week for me, at I, least. Ditto. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Happy, happy Monday. Um, as people start rolling in, uh, I will let you and everyone else know that these are always recorded. And so for the sake of our precious time together, I'm going to go through a couple housekeeping notes and... Um, if people want to kind of chime in and let us know where they're tuning in from, that would be lovely. Um, but in the meantime, I'll go through a few, a few things and then we'll kick it off. How does that sound? I love it. I'm ready. Right on. Where are you today? I am in, so we just actually moved house a little outside Nashville, Tennessee. So we are in the forest, literally. Awesome. Um, it's, it's always a nice win when my Wi-Fi works. So this is a, this is a great win. Yay. Um, but yeah, we, yeah, we're here. We've been here for a few months and uh, just settling in. Amazing. Good move. Yeah. Where are you at? Uh, I am, I had a move about, seems like yesterday, but about eight months ago to Venice, California, which is where our Four Sigmatic headquarters is. So I'm literally on the same street as our HQ. I'm a block away, which has been really nice to be to be out here and near my team at this time. That's awesome. Yes. California. Yay. Um, well, officially, Mikhail and everyone that's joining us today, welcome. We're so happy to have um, you all here with us today. This is the Elevate Everyday series, uh, which is our free monthly live platform de dedicated to sharing unique, quirky, unconventional ideas that work. So we bring experts across the wellness field to share their expertise from meditation, sustainability, holistic chefs, authors, and so many more. Um, as I mentioned, these are always recorded and uploaded to YouTube after the event. So if you have to jump off early or interested in webinars but can't make it live, always sign up and you'll get a link to the recording. Um, and as a thank you for being here, we always create a special discount code for you. I'll share this again at the end, but for today's code, it's nutrition stripped, pretty simple, um, that you can use on forcingmatic.com at checkout. Um, and again, I'll send you a follow-up email tomorrow that has a link to the recording, the discount code, and more ways to keep in touch with Mikkel. So don't worry about that. Um, if you would like subtitles today, that's also an option. So you can see the full transcript as we go along. You just click on the bottom of your screen. It says live transcript. So you'll see that at the bottom and then select view full transcript. Um, and if you want to change the size of the font, you can click live transcript again um, and then click subtitle subtitle settings and you can change the font size. Um, and quick disclaimer, while Mikel and I are both um, nutritionists, we are not your healthcare practitioners. So if you do have specific questions about your personal health concerns, please hold off in asking or ask in maybe a more general way so that we can um, answer as best as we can and that others can also benefit from your questions. And the chat box, the chat box is already going. We love hearing from you all. So please, please chime into the chat box. Um, and you can, if you wanna share your thoughts with not just the team at Four Sigmatic and Mikel and I today, uh, you can little, click on the little blue bar set to all panelists and change that to all panelists and attendees if you're okay with sharing your chats with the whole group. Um, and if you'd like to ask a question anonymously, you can toggle that back up to all panelists and only the two of us will see your question. Uh, we also have our team at Four Sigmatic here in the background. So if you have logistical questions throughout, feel free to ask and our team will get back to you if they can answer your question there. Um, and beyond that, those are kind of all my logistic housekeeping notes. Is there anything you wanna add before I give you a formal introduction, Mikkel? No, you're you're a Zoom event pro. Like you're teaching me <laughs> some chat hacks over here, so I'm all good. Fantastic. Well, for those of you that don't know Mikkel, um, as a dietitian and leading voice in mindful eating, named top twenty role models by Ariana Huffington. In Mikkel's work, she teaches how to reclaim balance with food by creating practical and effective habits that are easy, aligned, and enjoyable using her proprietary mindful nutrition method. She merges the science and art of mindfulness to empower people with the knowledge and tools they need to cultivate balanced mindset, eating, and lifestyle practices that deeply nourish them for life. 
She's been featured in Oprah.com, Dr. Oz, Women's Health, Today's Dietitian, Healthline, and more. So welcome, Mikael. We're so thrilled to have you today. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to get started. I, um, I always have to have an outline just of bullet points because I love talking about balanced eating so much um, that I could go on for hours and hours, but I'm really excited today. So I just want to first say thank you for everybody who is showing up or if you're watching later, also, you know, you should be proud of yourself for taking this time for you. Um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges a lot of us have, especially if you are a parent. I know like some of our Four Sigmatic community, same with the Nutrition Strip community, we are juggling so many things. I'm a puppy parent, so I get like a tiny taste of that, but we all live such busy lives. And so I just want to say thank you for showing up for you for the next 45 minutes to an hour to learn about balanced eating habits. I'm very actionable. So I'm a teacher at heart. I really like to give a lot of education. So yes, if you have a journal, which I know Danielle, you've told everybody ahead of time, like get that, you know, notepad and pen out um, because we will be going over a lot. And of course there's a replay and I will give you a lot of actionable items. So yes, I'm just really excited to be here. Um, I love, like I said, talking about balanced eating. I love talking and teaching about mindful eating practices in a way that really supports you to of course, feel that balance, but more importantly, feel ease and feel enjoyment because nourishing yourself doesn't have to be um, a punishment like diets, especially diets or programs or trends have really uh, taught us how to be and react to nourishment. It really can be enjoyable. So yeah, everything I'm teaching you today is really based on a few things. Number one, my decade of experience coaching thousands of students, but also a lot of what I'm going to try to teach you today in like a very condensed actionable item way is what I teach inside of our paid programs, which have helped thousands of students. So should we get started, Danielle? Should I yes. just like go for it? <laughs> I'm so excited. Yeah, I, I love, I know you throw around balanced eating a lot and at Four Sigmatic, we talk a lot about plant-based nutrition and that was like my initial draw to collaborating with you, but can we just break it down? Like what is balanced eating? So we're starting from the same platform and then we can continue to dive deeper. Yes, I love that. So when I ask people what they think mindful eating is, what they think balance means, and then also even health, and if you were to ask 50 people, everybody would say a different definition, which is can be confusing, but also is the most beautiful aspect of it because we get to uniquely define what that means for us. But with that being said, there are some, I would say, cornerstone rules or philosophies around what I think balanced eating really is. So just to take it back a little bit to give you just my general scope of where I'm coming from and my perspective as a dietitian who really teaches balanced eating, I like to share my food philosophy because I, I love food and I love to honor the many roles that food plays in our life. Because yes, as a dietitian, if I were to put my, my RD cap on, my registered dietitian cap on, I would say, yes, we need certain foods to obtain the nutrients that our physical body needs on a cellular level to show up, to function, to hug, to have this conversation, to listen, all of that. So we need that physical nutrition. But we also need the other areas of food. So we need that joy, the pleasure, the deliciousness, the social connection, experiencing other cultures, or really honing in on our traditional foods. So you have this really beautiful spectrum when you look at balanced eating in that way that honors both sides. You have this nourishment piece of the puzzle, but you also have like foods that just make you feel good, like those nostalgic foods, those like comfort foods. And that's really where for me, my food philosophy comes into place is honoring both sides of those spectrum, the spectrum, and then also teaching people how to actually like make that work in real life. Because when you have that perspective or that mindset where you can enjoy both sides, and, and I'll actually, like I said, I'm a teacher at heart, so I really want to teach people like a legit tool that they can use today. So we'll get into that in a minute. But mm -hmm. I really want you to think about balanced eating offering you, it, it offers you flexibility that you need to experience life. Many times when we first have Mindful Nutrition Method members or new clients come to us, 
they're so used to dieting or just being on things for years that create an unhealthy relationship with food that really d- disconnect themselves from their own hunger cues from what they really even want or need or how they define their health. And so when we start to shift that perspective and we start to think about flexibility and we start to think about how can food add to my life? Like how does it become abundant versus making me shrink back and feel like it's a lack or there's a sense of urgency or I can't eat this, I can't eat that. We put all these rigid rules and it just makes us feel so stiff. And so having that flexibility and that flow and ease like I talk about is a really big part of it. And then, like I said, unfortunately, that's just the, like the world of nutrition. So many of, and I know Danielle, you probably encounter this all the time with questions from your Four Sigmatic community, like we do at Nutrition Strip, but so many of us have been conditioned and exposed to so many messages and nutrition advice that's overwhelming or they contradict each other. And it leads us to think about food or eating habits in general as like, I have to be all in, I have to get it all right and correct, or I'm all out and I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing it good enough, which both of those just create so much imbalance, so so much inconsistency, uh, and of course, lack of enjoyment. And it, it's not easy, it's stressful. So I like to think of- Which is worse for our digestion at the end. <laughs> Let's not be stressed when we're eating. Stress is literally turning off so many cues of are we hungry, are we full? As you mentioned, these signals that our body is constantly giving us to help us find that balance within ourselves to show up in vitality. Um, so yeah, really important that you bring that up. Yeah, absolutely, Danielle. Yeah, especially if we're eating really fast too, which we can get into with a few mindful eating practices. Um, yeah, so I want to just even even further, if those of you who are on here, which again, Danielle said, like if you want to chat or ask questions or if you're curious, like keep chatting away. But I want to further define what that actually might look like with balanced eating, just in case someone is still like, okay, cool, Mikkel, I understand the concept, but how does it actually show up in my real life? Like, what does that actually mean? Mm-hmm. So I like to think of having balance with food and also it's your mindset. It's not just what you're eating, it's your mindset and it's also how you're living, but it looks like having that inner wisdom and that trust, as you just mentioned, like being able to listen to your hunger cues in order to nourish your body with the portion that you need or the food that you want. It looks like eating on both sides of those spectrum, right? So you're, it looks like eating nourishing foods and fun foods all week without you needing like a cheat day or a detox day. Um, it looks like you being able to honor both the nourishing foods and the enjoyment foods without worrying or feeling like, guilty or shame or that you have to make up anything that you ate on the weekend or during the week with extra exercise with the cleanse with the reset so these are so common and i'm just trying to help you all start to reframe like what is balanced eating so for me too it looks like like this past weekend it looks like me making pizza with my husband and asking myself, okay, but how can I make this like a little bit more foundational five? How can I add in some veggies or some more fiber, or some more plant-based foods around that? Um, or if I have chocolate cake, which I just had a, a few weeks ago for a birthday party, it also looks like me maybe putting the fork down when I'm truly not hungry anymore and I've had enough and I've just been like, okay, I'm, I'm good. I've had that. My hunger cues are satiated. So it also looks like those nostalgic foods too, which I think I, I want to bring that up because we are in the middle of July as we're filming this. The, I mean, it's summer. We are all hanging out. Most of us are hanging out with our friends and our families again. We're having summer gatherings. So you have that environmental and that social cue for your food habits, which absolutely impacts your food habits. So it might balanced eating and balance uh, with food also might look like you know, enjoying all those foods when you're out and about with your friends and family, or like, I don't know, your favorite mashed potato recipe that your dad makes, or it might look like passing on them because you're feeling full. So I just want to share a little bit about like what that actually might look like in your real life and how it shows up. Because once you start thinking about that for your own life, you're able to say, oh, okay, so where are my imbalances? Am I able to do those things right now? And if you, if you don't, or if you haven't, I just want to say that's okay because a lot of people don't. So give yourself a lot of self-compassion and just be a little curious about that process and how you're showing up. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. You mentioned the foundational five. Can you clarify what does that mean? 
Yes. So I want to go into, um, let's, let me, let me actually tackle, cause this is super related. If you don't mind, yeah. I want to tackle a little tool that right. you all can use in the moment. So in social situations, this is so great. We've been teaching all of our members about this heavily right now as everything's opening up, but I want you to, um, get really tangible with all of these examples of balanced eating and the foundational five will come into place with this, but this is a tool I call the balance test. So I keep talking about these spectrums, right? Of like nutrient dense foods, nourishing foods, and like all of your enjoyment foods. So I want everybody right now to just picture a sliding scale. So on one end of this scale, I want you to picture all of the things that you do that really deeply nourish your physical well-being in terms of food. And of course you could add in like lifestyle habits too, but for the sake of this, just try to think of food. So maybe it's like eating your fruits and vegetables every day, choosing whole grains, um, maybe opting for more plant-based foods, drinking more water, prioritizing fiber. So you have that on one side. And then on the other side of the, the scale, the sliding scale, I just want you to picture all of the foods that you make out of like celebration or enjoyment or emotion. So maybe that's like baking your grandmother's uh, brownie recipe or having pizza while watching like a football game or something or grabbing ice cream on your way home from work just because it sounds good. So in the middle of this scale is a marker. And so that marker, I want you to think about it as being, being you basically. And it's constantly going back and forth between the two sides. But in an ideal world, balance really is about like trying to keep it as centered as possible. So we want to be experiencing both sides of this sliding scale, because that's, like I said, that's all of those examples that create a balanced relationship with food. We want to have the space uh, and energy and time to be able to slide back and forth really slow and steady. We just don't want to do this, which is like aggressively swinging like a pendulum because swinging like a pendulum really represents that strong all in or all nothing mentality, which really creates that further imbalance when we're hanging out on one side or the other heavily or going between the two. So throughout that process, I just want you to if you're in a social gathering or today, as you're uh, like just assessing your meals that you had today or during the week, try to think about where you are on that sliding scale and just be, um, have the lens of like a scientist, just be two dimensional about it and say, okay, like I'm just gonna be a little curious about where I'm finding myself because having time on the right side is good, having time on the left side is good. We do need both to really fully support balanced eating habits. So I just wanted to highlight that because when we do this, like when we pendulum swing, which a lot of people do, it can result in that feeling of like guilt and shame. It can cause us to feel really restrictive with our eating habits. Um, and a lot of the times too, we just have such a strong desire or like want, we just want it so badly in terms of reaching balanced eating habits that we just, we don't know how to do it. So we exhaust ourselves trying everything and just going back and forth and back and forth. So that is just a little actionable tool that I wanted to um, recap before we hopped into foundational five. Cool. Yeah. Any that's really helpful. That? Yeah. And any questions on that, let, let me know. And then so yeah, Danielle, I feel like I'm rambling on. Again, I get really excited Great. about this. So just interrupt me if there are any questions. Yeah. But the, um, the foundational five was, was really born out of a few elements. So when I teach balanced eating and, and even just that test, I created the mindful nutrition method as an answer to really help people make it simple because typically changing our eating habits or habits in general related to our health is really difficult. There's a lot of resistance. There's a lot of moving parts. And I wanted to make such, like just, just a system that was super easy for you to build lasting balanced eating habits that are really unique to you. Cause that's, that's another component. We're all really, really unique. So within that mindful nutrition method, there are three pillars and one of them is mindful eating, which you might think that's odd, Mikkel. Like, why wouldn't you focus your whole teaching on mindful eating? Well, it's it's only like one thing, one part of a bigger picture, which of course is mindset that we just went over. And also mindful lifestyle, which is more of like your habits and tools and things that just like allow you to move in your life with ease so that you're able to actually be consistent. But mindful eating, for me is really about building awareness to your body so that you can make intentional food choices. You can build that confidence, that trust 
you know, again, like you were saying earlier, Danielle, to, you know, trust enough to even check in with your hunger cues. Because when we have so many imbalanced eating habits, it stems from that disconnection. And so mindful eating is just a great way to help you bring more awareness to what you eat, which is the foundational five, which I'll break down. But also, and again, that's just not, that's not the full thing. That's just like one tiny thing is what you actually eat. It's also about why you eat. Um, so hunger cues play a huge role in that. Like, why am I eating? Uh, or am I eating out of emotion or boredom or cravings? And it helps you investigate that. Uh, but also like when you eat and how you eat, like, are you, you know, rushing and you're, like you said, which is also not great for our digestion if we're just like slurping down smoothies really fast or eating fast. So that what you eat component is just that one little factor. And I like to bring people through my mindful nutrition method by first tackling that mindset, because it's so important to talk about that before I even like be where, before I'm even like, Hey, this is what a plant-based protein is, uh, or this is what a carbohydrate is so that they can start to like, just really get in that mindset of, um, balanced eating. Yeah. That makes so much sense. I think of like two things that are really relevant lately. A dear friend of mine teaches mindfulness and we do this exercise where you eat something really quickly, not mindfully, just like, I think we usually do it with a, like a raisin. I don't know if you've done this before and you just eat the raisin and you kind of are like, cool. Yeah. It tastes good. And eat it and swallow it. And then you do it again, but you actually take, I think it, it's quite exaggerated, but maybe like three to five minutes where you literally look at that raisin and every crinkle in it. And you learn the story of the growing and the farmers and the processing and all that it took to get that one little raisin into your hand. And then you slowly, you smell it and you let it sit in your mouth and you close your eyes and you savor it and you taste, you know, how it, how it's moving as you chew. And like, that was such a wake up call. The first time I did that, of like, whoa, okay, this is what a difference, like the exact same little raisin, but the intention that you put behind it. So there's that kind of extreme, but another extreme, and you kind of uh, brought this up earlier, but you know, if you do eat something that you're like, Oh, this isn't maybe the best for me, or this isn't like exactly what I feel like my body needs the stress around it, I find can be more detrimental than just eating that thing. So, you know, recently I went to a supermarket and it was like needed to run in and get a plant-based breakfast burrito. And it was full of kind of processed ingredients. And I was like, I don't want this. And I was like, here I am. It was super soggy. It was this burrito and it was like kind of wet. And I was like, this is, this isn't right. And I, I really don't want to eat this, but like, this is my nourishment for the day. And I had to like quickly change my mindset and be like, thanks. Like, this is going to nourish me. I'm so grateful that I have food to eat. And like, I'm going to allow every bite to nourish my body. And like that shift literally, and I've kind of ex experimented done like, you know, self as, um, like laboratory and you can realize you can really feel the difference of like, when you're telling yourself a story of like, this is not good for me. Why am I doing this? Da, da, da. And like how that moves in your body differently than like, thank you. This is nourishing me. And like, you're going to give whatever it is, even if it's like, I don't know, the most processed, like straight up corn syrup, you're like, okay, this is what I have. And I'm going to change my mindset around it. And it's amazing what shifts in the way that our body actually utilizes it. It sounds kind of like out there, but it's, yeah, it's such a, such a key piece. So I love that you are like, before we even get to the, what let's, let's get that mindset piece. Right. Yeah, Danielle, I, I love the raisin exercise. And actually, that would be some great homework if anybody's down besides using the balance spectrum balance test. Let's also use the raisin sensory exercise that Danielle just mentioned. Um, no, I really think that that is such a great cute, like, it's just like a, a fun little exercise that you could also do with kids. Like, I love the element that you brought up though, in particular, Danielle, which was that extra intention and just awareness around gratitude, like thanking, you know, like, thank you for this food. Like, thank you for allowing me to taste and enjoy and experience this. And also it's just really fun to take that 
moment to experience something that you may in the past have just like grabbed a handful of and just like chucked it back. We all have like trail mix or whatever, right? And then you take that other experience and you you pick up on just completely different things. Like again, the gratitude of where it was grown, who grow it, who grew it, how did it get to your house, but also the flavors, the textures, what it sounds like when you're eating, what the smell is like. So I love those sensory exercises for newbies who are like, oh, but what is a food experience? So I, I just, I, I love that you brought that up because I think that is so fun, so great. Again, to do with kids, do with family, do with yourself. So yeah, that's fantastic. And there, it just shows there's so many ways to practice mindful eating. Sometimes that can be really daunting. Like, I just want to like have my sandwich or whatever. And it's like, okay, it can be as simple as like taking an extra second, even to like, look at, look at our food, you know? And I love the idea. I've never heard that of like listening to the sound that it makes, but whatever works for you. And maybe it's even playful at first. You're like, this feels really silly, but in clinical experience, I've seen literally by creating that extra, even like five seconds of awareness, you know, coaching people to not eat while they're driving, but pull over and like, really look at that McDonald's sandwich or whatever it might be. And like how that fully shifts behavior, even that like extra few seconds of really connecting to whatever's in front of us and what's then becoming part of us. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you had just mentioned like taking an extra five seconds or something before you actually start the food process. So I feel like we're giving people action items left and right, which I love. So hopefully everyone's just like taking notes, going to practice these later, going to DM me on Instagram and let me know how they're going or comment below wherever you're watching this. But even having, as you had mentioned with digestion, with bringing more intention and, and present moment awareness to the food experience, something as simple as just deep breathing. So a lot of times too, when we think of mindful eating or when I even talk about mindful eating, sometimes people have this story or this idea of what it has to be like. Like for example, maybe I have a plate in front of me and it is like beautifully styled like you see on our Nutrition Strict Instagram. And I have like candles and music and it's peaceful <laughs> and all of that stuff. And I'm sitting there and I'm Zen and I'm just like fully present. Now, those are amazing tools that you absolutely could use to add to your positive food experience. Absolutely. Like I love creating a beautiful atmosphere so that I feel like more into my food or making the food presentation really enticing and exciting. Again, especially if you're cooking for family or kids or people who you're trying to like sneak more veggies into their diet. Um, but also just taking that extra time to take a few deep breaths before you engage in your mindful eating experience is, is just enough. Like it could be very modern for you. Like you said, if you're on the go, if you're eating out, even just taking, like nobody has to know that you are taking a few deep breaths. You could just do it for yourself. You could excuse yourself if you're in a public space and use the bathroom and just like take a few deep breaths and just get into your body so that you're able to like fully get into your parasympathetic nervous system, which is just like your rest and digest mode so that you're not hopping from working and doing all the to-do lists and running all the errands. And then you're just like eating really fast and you're missing the entire food experience. You're able to at least come into the situation with a little bit more awareness and mind body connection to be like, okay, am I super, super hungry? Or am I like kind of hungry? I just need a little bit. So you're able to then even add on the layers of like hunger cues and eating how much in, in terms of portions, how much you uniquely need and like checking in, like, is this even really good? Do I enjoy it? How can I make it really delicious next time I have it? So there's a lot of little steps that you can do, but it doesn't have to look a certain way. You get to choose what your mindful eating experience is. And again, like I that's why our whole mindful nutrition method program is a year long because I really walk people through the mindset, the eating, the eating experience, and like give them really tangible tools, like the balance spectrum so that you can really create your own. Cause again, that's what it's all about. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And, we'll have to send plenty of links to the, to the program. I see your and team, know, Kelsey's already sharing that and we'll, we'll put it in the, the email tomorrow and Oh, awesome. show notes of this, but yeah, beyond the mindful eating, what there's five, right? Yeah. So I was going to say, I totally looping around answering your question directly. Thank you. Yes. Um, 
So yeah, the foundational five is really answering that question, what to eat in a simple way. So we know nutrition science 101, there are, there are three macronutrients. It's fat, it's protein and carbohydrates, right? It's super easy to remember. So when I approach balanced eating and how to make it really easy for our clients, for our new members, I like to break it down a little bit more. So number one, you have your protein. And also Danielle, if we have time, um, I have smoothie ingredients in front of me because I was like, wouldn't it be kind of fun to do a smoothie demo? So maybe we'll get into that if you want me to. Love that idea. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I have like my blender in front of me. So maybe I'll actually like start putting ingredients in there. But um, basically it's a way to think about how to look at your plate or your smoothie container or your salad bowl or when you're out and when you're vacationing and you're traveling, you're at social gatherings and ask yourself, how can I make this meal as balanced as possible? How do I have like all of my needs on a plate? So that's for me, the foundational five is protein, it's fat, it's starchy and sugary carbohydrates. I kind of lump them together. It's non-starchy carbohydrates and then the flavor factor, which is really unique to our system because again, I really want people to embrace flavor and deliciousness and make a meal like yours and make it be enjoyable to you. So I love the flavor factor. And we have so many recipes on Nutrition Strip too to get you kind of like thinking about that. But um, yeah, so, so protein, I'll kind of just start off with that as well. And I have, um, what I've been sipping on by the way is the Four Sigmatic Mushroom Cacao Mix with Rishi. Mm -hmm. I have this like on ice, which is my new favorite because, and I love the coffee. But if I have like coffee more than once a day, I am that type of person to be like, like all over the place. So now it's your jam. Yeah. So I have to like manage that. But, but with um with protein, I love this one by Four Sigmatic, the um, plant-based protein with superfood. So this one is creamy cacao, delicious, like super rich chocolate flavor, basically. But protein, when you think about, <laughs> what'd you say? Sorry, Danielle. Thank you. Yeah. Thank so you the protein. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. So when you think about protein, well, all of your macronutrients in a nutshell are really important. I mean, we need all of the macronutrients for a reason. So protein in particular, though, it has a hand. And of course, I think when everybody thinks of protein, they're like muscle muscle building, lean body mass, all that good stuff. So yes, absolutely, it plays a role in that, but it also helps you feel full after your meals. It plays a role in digestion and tissue synthesis, immune health, um, it's vital. It also makes up basically every single cell. So when you're talking about like your skin and your hair and your nails, your muscle, um, digestive tract, so much more proteins really in every cell. So it's important that you're eating it at every meal. And when I talk about proteins, um, and I know we are talking to a community too who really love plant-based. So of course you can use whatever protein that you enjoy. So for me, when I look at proteins, obviously there's plant-based and there's animal-based. Um, the way I personally define plant-based is really just eating a diet that's based in plants. So for you, that might look like having all uh, plant-based proteins. Or for somebody else, it might look like having like that and maybe a higher ratio of animal proteins because they're they're newer to whole food living or plant-based or some something in the mix. But really my whole philosophy is like, it's gotta be based in plants, meaning you're eating all those great fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans, which are my favorite, and then some more uh, plant-based proteins. So like, again, protein powders are great to supplement your diet with. I love these. I don't like rely on them for every meal, but they're amazing for convenience, for supplementing, for getting like an added boost, especially if you're on the go too. But it could look like beans and legumes, tempeh, um, tofu, quinoa, nuts, seeds, nut butter. And then if you're talking about animal proteins, of course, anything that's like wild caught seafood or grass fed beef or poultry. Um, I feel like my basic rule with animal proteins is really like if you can befriend a local farmer and support them and get to know their farming practices. I mean, it's a win, win, win. You're, you're helping them locally, but you're also getting to know the farming practices, if you can uh, get them humanely raised and really like question where your food's coming from, especially with animal proteins. 
that's just like my gold standard and an ideal situation. I know not everybody has access to that, but that's like my ideal scenario and, you know, little period on the sentence. But um, so yeah, Danielle, should I make a smoothie as we go along? Cause I could just start <laughs> adding ingredients to this blender. I won't turn it on though. Yeah, show us what a balanced about. So this is going to be like having all five of the foundational five in one blender, right? Yep, totally. Yeah. Yep. So um, let's see it. Yeah, so I'm going to add, because we just talked about protein, I'm going to start with, well, you know what? I'm actually just for like smoothie purposes, I'm actually going to start with liquid. So like my stuff doesn't stick to my Vitamix here. So in, in here, I just have some filtered water. Um, I like to mix filtered water with coconut milk because coconut milk for me, like if I'm drinking a smoothie, I want it to feel a little bit thinner so I can actually like enjoy it through a straw. But if I were to make a smoothie bowl, I would totally just use like maybe half, but coconut milk only and no water. So it gets really thick. Amazing. So, um, reusing this glass. So I'll sip out of this. I'll serve it out of that. Perfect. So in there, that's just the, that's the first step. And that, in terms of foundational five, if you're using something like coconut milk, I'm sure everybody could guess. Maybe we should start like quizzing people in the chat box. That <laughs> <Love> be, <laughs> but that would be considered a fat Correct. coconut milk. And then I like to do a heaping scoop of the four sigmatic protein. And so one scoop of that is going to be let me just 18 grams. Yep. Yeah. And I love that because I actually look for around, like if I'm making a smoothie or something, I really want like around 20 grams of protein, but actually I always add some type of nut butter, like a heaping two tablespoons of nut butter. So I know I'm going to get about like eight grams from that too. Amazing. So that's your protein. Um, I also want to call out too, like, I do really appreciate the four sigmatic blends. Like I love how you all do medicinal mushrooms in there, like reishi, turkey tail, lion's mane, cordyceps, chaga. Um, I'm, I've been really fascinated with those over the past few years and just, and even just increasing my own knowledge about herbalism and everything. But just to give people like a quick little primer, all of those mushrooms have been shown to help with sleep, anxiety, depression, um, focus, mental cognition, memory, concentration, um, some have also been shown to prevent certain types of cancers, um, support immune health, lower cholesterol, specifically LDL, lower or reduce inflammation. So they are just like all of those combined. I'm kind of listing out some of their general health benefits and that they've been uh, shown to help with. So I just wanted to call that out too. Yeah. So yeah, adding that. And then also, of course, like always talk to your RD too, if you want like extra little tips on protein and how to incorporate mushrooms and stuff into your, into your diet. Yeah. Um, okay. And our, our philosophy is like, how can we make it, as you said, it's really hard to get new routines started. So how can we make it as easy as possible? And uh, if you're already using a protein powder, it's like, if you're already using a, a ground coffee, elevate to a ground coffee with functional mushroom extracts in it. If you're using a plant-based protein, you know, we prize it on being really clean, obviously. So there's, you know, no gums, fillers, grains, stevia, anything in there. And I like to think of like what we left out. So, okay. So we left out and then there's this hollow space that we we're able to fill. Um, so yeah, there's our top five functional mushrooms and two plant adaptions in there. So it's like immune support, stress support, plant-based protein in a scoop. All in one. <laughs> Love it. I want, we can talk later, but I'm like, I wonder if just one scoop of protein meets your criteria for the foundational five. You know, I'm like, okay, we have our protein. We have our, our flavor comes from whole foods. So it's the only two ingredients that give that one, the flavor are organic unrefined cacao and organic coconut milk. So it's like, okay, we have that. Um, we're getting, you know, through our functional mushroom extracts, we're getting some of the other, you know, carbohydrate faster, we'll call it flavor faster. yeah, yeah. I'm like, we're getting there <laughs> we're getting there I mean pretty close no I really do love when I can again like make things easy for people especially yeah. if you're already making a smoothie and and all of your functional ingredients are included in that that's amazing so I have you know say, same with that um flavor factor I have something called the flavor factor sprinkle recipe on nutrition strip and it's kind of the same concept 
it's like, okay, if I want to sprinkle nutritional yeast on my salad to boost the protein, I'm also going to add in a ton of herbs and spices and all this good stuff that I wouldn't normally like reach for individually, but I want to make it really easy so that I can eat it and get all of those health benefits and it'll be amazing. So it's kind of the same concept with the, with the protein powder. So love that. Um, all right. So next up, I know we're going to get up for time. So I want to make sure there's enough time for questions. Um, so fat is another, so that's the second of the foundational five. So fat, when people think of fat or when you start to think of fat, I want you to start to think of fat as being really satiating and it contributes to feeling like full basically. So that's a really easy way to be like, okay, why do I need fat at every meal? Okay. It helps me feel satiated and full. In addition to that, it um, helps your body absorb fat soluble vitamins and antioxidants. So vitamins like A, D, E, and K are all fat soluble. So you need a little bit of a fat source for them to be properly absorbed. And so, um, and of course those vitamins are so crucial to our brain, to our hormones, our tissues, our immune health, hair, skin, nails, all of that good stuff. And also it's play, fat plays a role in every hormonal function as well. So we need some good fats. And then in addition to that, omega-3 fats, which can be found in both um, animal and plant-based protein sources like we were just talking about. So plant-based sources have a little bit more bioavailable resources like salmon or mackerel or even like krill, things like that. But you absolutely can find omega-3 fatty acids in like chia seeds, um, flaxseed, which I have for our smoothie too, and some nuts and seeds and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to add then to our smoothie here. And purslane, I have to add as a little herbalist chiming in, yes. purslane is the richest plant-based, land plant-based. So there's a lot of omega-3s that we can get from algaes, but on land, we have this incredible, it's often looked at as a weed. I like saw it on the streets yes. of LA the other day. I'm like this is everywhere and you can pickle purslane, you can eat it as a salad. It almost looks like a succulent and it's full of omega-3s. So if you guys are, you know, have a little land or like even are walking down the street, look up what purslane looks like. You'll be like, oh, that. Um, and it's amazing. So Daniel, long- I love that you brought that up. And I wish that I so I have some growing right now on our property. And really quick, I have to sidebar and tell you a story because I just started gardening for the first time last year. And it has like always been a dream of mine to have a garden and grow my own food. And I have just been so lit up and, and enjoy about it, blissed out about it. So last year I had my first garden and I bought all these seeds so that I could start planting all of my garden produce from seed. And one of the seed packets that I bought was purslane because I was obsessed with the fact that it was so nutrient dense. I had yeah. never had it before. Like you can't find it really at grocery stores. Yeah. So I was like, I have to grow this. This is amazing. And I got the seed packet and it was completely empty. Like I got a dud pack where they didn't send me seeds. And so I was like, so bummed out. And I was like, it's fine. I'll just, I'll just do it next year. So come July around this time last year, I'm in my garden, I'm harvesting some potatoes. And I notice this succulent looking plant that looks like purslane. And I was like, oh my gosh, is it growing wild here? And I looked it up, sure enough. And I triple checked with my father-in-law who's been gardening for like 40 years. And he's like, oh yeah, we get plenty of it here in Tennessee. And I just like, it was the most joyful thing ever. So we have it right now outside and I wish that I had brought it in. But anyway, just just a fun story. That's um, a great story. I've also never heard of purslane being sold in seeds, which is hilarious because yeah. so many people are weeding it out of their garden. But. Yes, I know. It's like lamb's quarter, which is like basically wild spinach as well. And we had that, like, it was so invasive in our garden space before we like tilled it out and everything, but they even sell those. And I was like, come over here. Let me like hook you up with all my. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, okay. Additional weeds, another webinar. Yeah. <laughs> drop it in the chat that'd be really fun okay so in this this is um what is this oh this is peanut butter I was like this is almond butter I can't remember I did some peanut butter classic 
delicious. And again, that's like eight grams of protein, which is really nice and some good fats. The next one I'm going to go over a little bit more quickly. So we have um, starchy carbohydrates. So starchy and sugary carbohydrates. I like to kind of group those together. Uh, a lot of people are probably right. When you think of carbs, you think of like rice and quinoa and bread and the pastas and all that good stuff, which are absolutely accurate. And when you think of carbohydrates, I want you to start thinking of like, okay, I need carbohydrates and my body needs it. My brain needs it for energy. So I like to think of like carbohydrates, energy, and it's also our body's preferred fuel source. And they're really easy to obtain as well. So our brain uses it, our muscle tissue, every cell in our body utilizes carbohydrates for energy, just in like different amounts and ratios. So when you are thinking about carbs for smoothies or meals, it can be anything and everything like I had mentioned with the starchy carbohydrates like potatoes and quinoa and rice, but it could also like, I'd like to group like your fruits um, into this mix as well, or like beans have starchy carbohydrates in them as well. And they're all really important for energy, for gut health, for heart health, hormonal health, um, keeping us really nice and full as well. So I love, 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 love starchy carbohydrates. So for this one, I'm just gonna use some um, strawberries. So I have some really delicious looking strawberries that I got from the, um, local co-op here and I, fro I got them frozen or I bought them fresh and then I had to freeze them because they were like ready to go ripe. So that's another little hack for reducing food waste. If you get a uh, fruit or vegetable for that matter, if they're really ripe, you can just pop them in the freezer. So I have some strawberries in here, also a great source of vitamin C in season, tastes delicious, use whatever fruit that you like. And then, um, Moving on to the fourth foundational five element is non-starchy carbohydrates. So this is one is probably a given as well. Non-starchy carbohydrates are all of your leafy greens, which I have in front of me, just like a mix. They are your bell peppers, cucumbers, like basically all of the vegetables that your heart can handle. That is what non-starchy non carbohydrates are. And they're really important for not only feeling really full because they are loaded with fiber, but they have prebiotics, which are great for gut health. So that's the food that your um, good bacteria eat. And then vitamins, minerals, antioxidants. So basically when you think of non-starchy carbohydrates, think of how can I add so many vegetables to this meal? Um, so like I said, with fiber, it helps regulate your bowel movements, which is really important. It helps regulate blood sugar levels, your hunger and satiety levels. It lowers uh, certain types lowers the risk of certain types of cancer, risk of diabetes, and of course, just aids in digestion overall. We all know that when we have like a big salad or a fiber rich meal, our digestion is much more regular the next day or the day of. So that's a little nice way to remember non-starchy carbs. So I just have some, um, yeah, just a mix of lettuces. I've literally never seen someone put lettuces in a smoothie before. Yeah, oh. like spinach or kale, but just like straight romaine oh. and greens. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Greens. Oh. Greens of any kind. Greens of any kind. Because especially when you have this is actually a really great tip, Daniel. Um, especially when you have a protein powder like Four Sigmatic that does have a flavor factor in it, which is that really strong, like rich cacao flavor. Yep then it really masks the green. And if you still are like, oh, it's like a tiny bit too green in flavor for me, what you could do also is just add a tiny bit of lemon juice, or you could just switch out your, your different type of non-starchy carbohydrate. You could do like frozen zucchini, which I shared on our Instagram the other day, and it was like blew up. People were like, what? You can add zucchini to your smoothies? Yes. You can add cauliflower. You can even add beans, which I love. So that is like, obviously our starchy carbohydrate with fiber. A so bean smoothie. What would you, what beans would you use? I honestly, you can use any bean. I think like for those who are newbies with the bean smoothie, I would say just do like a really basic white bean. Um, and something like you can even use canned. So just rinse them off really well. And in an ideal world, rinse them off, lay them flat and then put them in the freezer. Hmm. And then like, like and then like separate them a little bit before you put them in like a stasher bag or something, store them in the freezer. And then you have all these frozen beans and you can just add them to your smoothie. And it's like ice, but better. Cause again, you don't taste them at all. And they just contribute to this really delicious, like creamy flavor uh, or texture, excuse me. And then also, 
no flavor uh, and fiber. So it's so cool. Food. Okay. Beans. Okay. So that was our, that was our non-starchy carbohydrate. And then we've been talking about the flavor factor, but that really is like that unique component that I just wanted to call out because you have to make sure, like for me, this smoothie is going to taste great for my taste. Like I love this mix, but you might want to alter your different ratios of ingredients to make it taste great for you. And so that's really where that flavor factor comes into place. And then one other thing I forgot to add actually was optional. So if you wanted to add an optional, like just fiber ingredient, this again, completely optional. You have plenty of fiber in here from fruits and the greens. So you don't really, or even vegetables, whatever you use. But I like to just add like, I wanna say like two teaspoons of flaxseed or chia seed just for me for the texture. I, I just really enjoy the texture with it. And then, um, and then basically you blend it and I will mute myself while I blend this just to show everybody what it looks like, okay? Yeah, and I like that you're getting soluble and insoluble fiber in there as well. So chia or the flax when it's, there it is. Yeah, when it gets into that liquid mix, it's creating that soluble, you can blend it. I'll keep talking. And soluble fiber, I think of like adding to the bulk of our, of our stool and then insoluble being those parts that our body can't actually digest. So acting more like a brush through our intestines. So um, yeah, beyond just additional starchy carbohydrates, we're getting all those other benefits for healthy digestion. That was the quick blend. Well, I did like a 30 second. Sometimes I would do like a 45 second, but for the sake of time, I'm like, this is good enough. And Love also it. thank goodness for the mute. Um, I used to do smoothie demos before I was like used to zoom and I'd be like, just hold on. And it was so loud, <laughs> but anyway, we learn. we learn. Um, so yeah, that's it. And I'll do a taste test, but so lovely. Honestly, like with your question about the greens, when you have something like really delicious, ripe and in season fruit, and I only use maybe like a half cup, that's really what you taste. And then in addition to like the protein powder. So basically it's like, you know, like a peanut butter and strawberry jam with chocolate. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so the any type of greens is like a, amazing hack that I've never heard of. Bean smoothies is a totally new thing that I've never heard of. And I've heard of a lot of weird cooking concoctions. Is there anything else that like you would add to this mix or that might be really unexpected for us of like, I don't know, it, it doesn't have to be a protein either, but things that you kind of are routinely bringing in to meet this, this five pillar philosophy. Yeah, I, I love to mix up the foundational five, not just with smoothies, because that's, again, that's the, the golden ticket with using the foundational five to create balanced meals. You can literally use it for lunches and nourish meals, which I heavily do. Um, but for smoothies in particular, I would say like additional ingredients outside of those that I was just talking about, sometimes just depending on like my phase of life lately, like I've been moving, moving is noted as a really stressful activity, like on all fronts. So I've been really trying to like deeply nourish myself, not just my mental health and emotional and spiritual, but also physical. And so anytime that I can squeeze in extra like um, adaptogens, mushrooms, like we were just talking about with four sigmatic protein powders, like if I can add spirulina into it, um, literally anything to where I can boost the nutrition really easily, it, it, it'll be done, whether that's in a food or like a powder form. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. And that's another great way to, to add additional things into a smoothie. If you don't want to taste like the strong, bitter flavor of, you know, whatever superfood ingredient you're really excited about. Um, Oh, someone is asking, I think I know the answer, but if they said, if you don't mind me asking what blender brand is the one you use, my blender won't blend that well with leafy greens. Excellent question. And I have been there before. Um, I started blending with, uh, I can't even remember what the brand was, but anyway, this is a Vitamix and I swear by Vitamix. I have had one since I was 20 um, and I, I love them. They really, I know they're, they're, they're expensive, but they are worthwhile for the investment. I use it multiple times a day, but I will share a tip for those of you who do not have a high speed blender, like a Vitamix, what you can do is as I was starting to layer all of the ingredients within the smoothie container, for sure, start with your liquid 
And then you could add in basically like go from the most water rich ingredient to the top. So basically it would be like the liquid that we use, the water, the almond milk. And then I would use like, I'd probably put in the greens there, blend it, take the lid off, add in the fruit, blend it. So it basically blending every ingredient, it's, it's going to be fine. Um, but that'll probably get you the best result in terms of creaminess is just the liquid. Great hacks. Yeah. And all about that Vitamix. I honestly have had mine. I think I, I it just needed a replacement and I was like, I haven't had it that long. And I looked back and I think it was like 15 years of one Vitamix. So yeah. And I, yeah. I it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had, I've had two, I've had two in uh, over 17 years or something like, or 15 years. And yeah. the first one I had was for a solid eight and I used it like three times a day. So they're fantastic. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Um, what other, uh, yeah, smoothie things, but is there, what's like maybe your most common question that you get asked that you're like, okay, this needs to be said. Like we went through the balance in the beginning, but maybe on like one level deeper, whether it's through this foundational five or something that like you really want people to just, you want the clarification out there. Yeah, that's a great question, Danielle. It is related to balanced eating. Um, and I would say the question that we hear most often from like whether they're new nutrition strip community members or people who are just like finally getting to that point where they're like, you know what, I'm really tired of doing all the diets. I really want to make like a legitimate long-term change for myself and have balanced eating habits. It would be the question of like, I don't know where I'm at. Like how imbalanced am I actually right now? And so Actually, from that, because we were getting so many questions about this really heavily over the last year, we created a super fun quiz. I don't know about you, but I remember like reading fashion magazines or women's health magazines, like with my girlfriends in college taking like all the quizzes. So I'm biased to that, but we created a really fun quiz that walks you through like, hey, this is where you're at right now. Because part of changing is the awareness of where you're starting from. And so we basically synthesized it down into four different balanced eating archetypes in this quiz. And then immediately after you get your results, I give you those tangible things like, hey, check out this article that I wrote that you're going to actually resonate with because of where you're at. And also, you know, check out this offering or book a free call with our RD on our team. Like we have so many different supportive materials that are free for people um, just to get them started. So I would say that's probably the biggest one. I love that. Yeah. It reminds me, I don't know if this is accessible or maybe this might be braided into your quiz, but in initial intake with my clients, I have them check any symptoms they've experienced in the last couple of weeks and then match those to potential nutrient deficiencies, right? So it's like, if you're feeling kind of anxious and having trouble sleeping and you might have pain in your muscles, okay, it's really leading to, you might need a little more magnesium right? Or if you're like, you're really craving sugar, there's something, okay, you might need some chromium or, or whatever that might look like. And so there's lots of tools out there. And I'm sure, you know, through nutrition stripped websites and yeah, getting deeper to really assess, okay, where am I at right now? Um, and it's amazing. I just want to say, sometimes it can feel like daunting and complicated and our bodies have evolved to, to heal and to feel really good and vital. And so I think the biggest thing is like trusting in the body again, paying attention and our body like wants it's on our team. Right. And how can we kind of create that, um, create that relationship where we're like, okay, yeah, I'm going to listen to you and we're on the same page here. Oh, perfect. Kelsey just linked. You can take the free quiz. Oh, uh, awesome. on the nutrition stripped website. Thanks. Kelsey. Okay. How can people stay in touch with you? There's the nutrition stripped website. What's coming up. What's next after this? Yes. Okay. So I feel like everybody after watching this definitely has homework assignments. So we're talking doing the raisin sensory exercise. We're talking applying the balance spectrum tool into your daily life. Uh, oh my gosh. I can't even recap it all. Smoothie ingredients, all that good stuff. But the best way to get connected with me for sure, take the quiz because then you'll be on our email list. And I write emails every single month and I really keep you in the know there. Otherwise, if you use Instagram, <clears throat> um, I'm really intentional with my Instagram use, but when I am on there, I am fully on there looking at DMs, commenting with our community. So for sure, hop into my DMs and just say, hey, just say hi, tell me, 
um, that you listen to it to our workshop here and that'll give me some context and I can help you with some more resources. Amazing. Yeah. So your Instagram is at nutrition stripped yes. website is nutrition strip.com. Yes. The and quiz the quiz is, like, is nutrition strip.com forward slash quiz. Perfect. And I'll put that in the follow-up email tomorrow. And again, if you want to go snag your plant-based protein from four sigmatic with your functional mushrooms and adaptogens, or really go get on board with anything, um, Mikhail's code today, and it'll be, it'll be active beyond today, but so you can go use it and I'll put it in the YouTube as well. It's just nutrition stripped, um, at checkout. So really couldn't be easier. Uh, and this was so much fun. I just want to thank you again for your time and sharing so much of your wisdom with our community today. Thank you, Danielle. This was so much fun. Like I said, what a wonderful way to start a Monday, but also start the week. Great conversation. And yeah, I'm looking forward to anybody who joined us and uh, joined with us today live. Just send me a DM, say hi. And um, yeah, I really am grateful for you. Right on. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week. You too.